So, hello everyone, my name is Today I want to start a new video series. We're going to talk about why are modern games soulless? Why are so many modern games bad? And of course, I say it immediately here, I'm not referring to every, but literally every video game, right? I'm referring to the other vast majority of new games being released. So if you're new to this channel, I am a game developer, working with game development for many years, among other stuff. And my point of the video here is to bring up different factors why game development or game produced today are not as good as they used to be. And please subscribe, slap it as well, right? Because it's the first part then of many different factors. Of course, there's not one simple factor why games are worse today. That being said, though, this video here, of course, I will explore, in my opinion, one of the biggest, if not the biggest factor, yet the factor no one ever basically brings up. And this is simply this thing. Game developers today, the new generation of game developers, are way worse than they used to be. Their skill level, their care level, and their soul level, yes, speaking their nerd power, right, is much, much lower. I understand people get angry when you bring this up, right? Because it kind of touches to a hot topic, right? Are people actually less skilled and so on? Is it something other issues are? And yes, they are. So let me explain here in the video. The biggest reason, kinda, is because games are popular today. This is actually the biggest reason. Uh, because when games are popular, right, means that everyone plays games. That's a good thing, of course, in a general sense. But that actually amounts to way worse developers. And this is not my opinion. This is actually a matter of fact. And I'll explain it in detail. But I'll point out here before we enter it that I am also a behavioral scientist, right? I have, uh, you know, several degrees and I publish so on. And what I've studied mostly, right, and my degree so on, is actually in behavioral human economy, right? Uh, and then I apply that into uh, making video games, right? So for me, this is a no-brainer from like a behavioral science standpoint. So let me explain what I mean here. It used to be the ultimate lowest status thing ever, right? And you were a goddamn super nerd if you liked video games. However, what did that mean? That meant that people that were really, really into video games were really, really hardcore. It of course is more than one factor why young developers today are worse than they used to be. But the biggest one truly is that they are not as nerdy. Think about it. Like I said, the status of being a game developer was absolutely you know, appalling and low, right? Being a gamer was incredibly low, was incredibly low status. When I, when I was a kid, you know, I got bullied, right? I got beaten up, I got stabbed and so on, right? In school, because I was a gamer, right? So being a gamer, like 30 years ago, was a huge commitment, right? Uh, that, of course, meant that the people that were gamers usually were always also nerds in, like, comic books, they liked manga and anime, right? They were IT stuff, they could build computers, etc. They had a bunch of skills, and they were very, very dedicated. This here is a bell curve, or a normal distribution curve, right? What I mean is the apex of this curve was much more, you know, to the east, right, of the skill cap, because, of course, if you have, like, 10 people that are really, really committed to making video games, they are also probably quite skilled. However, this is the normal distribution curve today, then, right? Uh, it has a much more typical, like, 50-50 skill level, right? Uh, young generation is following this curve. This is actually, again, objective fact. People get very, very angry when we talk about it sometimes at some companies, but this is the truth. Uh, because think about it. From a behavioral standpoint, if only very, very few people wanted to make video games, again, go back 30 years ago, people were bullied. Now, today, with some like Big Bang Theory and so on, nerds are cool, right? Sexy being nerds and so on, right? The game science is cool and so on. It used to be incredibly not cool, right? Being a game developer. And the thing is that, because of that reason, right, now game development as a studio or whatever, they attract a quite large portion of humans from all kinds of, you know, people. Which in one way is good, of course, but it also means that, for example, as a skill level here could be coding, you're obviously going to attract really bad coders and good coders, where in the past you would probably attract like 9 out of 10 really good coders because they were really into being nerds. Basically, again, the nerd level of, you know, old developers were way, way higher. So that meant that the general, you know, skill level as in coding, art, design and so on, were much higher. It also meant that the informal and formal language is very, very hard today working game development. I'll explain this later in the video, but it's a very important point out here that the formal language was much better 30 years ago. Today, formal language is almost non-existing. And my life was kind of like the kid, trade martial art because you're a Wii, you watch Amazon, you know. So I had to, you know, learn how to defend Kwando, especially Judo. 
and they have, you know, today then, a few black belts. So me, as a gamer, as a game developer, I was forced right into the blood and tears. I'm not saying that to be, you know, oh look at me, I'm so awesome or whatever, right? I'm saying this to try to explain to people, or as a post, or younger than me and so on, how it used to be, right? So here's the image of Quentin Tarantino. Uh, you know, I think a very good a director, movies, creator and so on, right? And he... I would say really exemplifies the movie buff guy. Right? He really loves movies. This guy knows everything about movies. If you go and in, interview him, he has seen every bad movie and every good movie ever, right? And the thing is that, talk about this nerd level again. I really want to break this down, right? The nerd level of like growing up with video games in the 80s and 90s meant that you were basically very, very few people like, like maybe 5% in school or whatever, maybe less than that were playing video games. Like less than that, right? Yeah. It was like me and one friend in my class to play video games, like 25 students, right? That's less than 10%. Incredibly low amount of people when I was in high school thought video games were cool, right? Or even play video games all at all. And what that meant was that if you play video games, you were kind of like when Tarantino says that you were really into it, right? You watched all, you played all the games. And it's very important to point out there that I was talking about just playing the games that were released when I was a kid, right? I'm talking about going back, talking to my uncle, oh, he played games, okay, what is this game, right? What is retro game back in those days? What is the game and so on? So you're really, really into it. You played all of the games, right? And also, very commonly, we also called general nerdy. So you were into comic books. You were into manga and anime. You were into movies, right? So there are very few people, when I grew up as a kid, that, all, that played video games. They were also Star Trek, you know, Star Wars. They watched everything, right? And including, and of course, playing a lot of video games. And this was the very common behavior. That, of course, means is that you get a bunch of people, right? Let's say back 20 years ago now. So 100 people are coming out of college with a gaming, like, development degree, right? These 100 people have all basically, like, you know, tiny quintartinos. They're really into it, right? They're all like me, forcing the blood and tears, right, of having defending, loving video games. These people are very, very nerdy, right? They know everything about everything. Not just video games. They know everything about Star Trek. They know everything about anime. They know everything about Marvel, whatever. DC Comics, whatever. That's the kind of people you had, right? That being said, in these 100 developers, of course, some of them are completely incompetent, right? You're going to have everyone amazing. So maybe in these 100 people leaving college 20 years ago, you would have 50 people that are very, very skilled and 50 people that are just incompetent because they're moronic, right? So they can never be, uh, you know, skilled. But that's, but it's still new stuff, but they have no skills, right? It's kind of 50-50, right? Something like that. The like high skill level is still there, right? Now, today, then, instead, uh, because video games are so popular, you're not getting the Tarantino, right, of liking video games. You are getting the random guy that is kind of like, oh, I grew up playing Little Wolf, Little League, uh, videos are cool or sexy, I want to work in, I want to be entertainer or something. And these people, they don't, haven't played the retro games. They haven't played all the famous games, right? They don't know manga and anime. They don't know comic books, right? They don't know whatever, martial art. They don't know anything, really, uh, in general sense. Because they kind of use normal, casual people, if I have to refer to that. But the truth is, that is really how it is, right? Again, from a behavioral standpoint, the people that had left college, right, 20 years ago, they were all super, super hardcore, right? Today, instead, we're getting the casual person. Which, of course, in a one way is better, because it's less bullying, right? It's less pain to be a gamer and so on. But it also means that we're getting anyone, right, wanting to enter the industry. So today, way more people, then, are coming out, right, from college, want to work in the game industry. So you have, let's say, 2,000 people. 2,000, instead of 100, right? However, out of those 2,000, it's only, like, maybe 150 people that are skilled. So you actually have a higher total number of skilled developers coming out every year. That's actually true. However, you also have, you know, 1,850 terrible people. Right? That's actually true. Let me also point it out to say it here. Generally speaking, though, right? When someone leaves, like, random university with a coding degree, half of them are terrible, okay? That's just a fact of reality. So maybe I'm a little bitter here. I'm a little bit of angry man yelling at clouds, right? A little bit, but I have to point out I think it's very important to understand that most people, or I say most, but at least 50 of the people aren't actually competent in whatever they're doing. Like, that is just a fact <laughs> of reality. Uh, so it's not only about video games, it's IT development, you know, any kind of engineering. A lot of people aren't very competent. That's, that is a matter of fact. However, right, again, 
back in the old days when I was young, right? Because the only few people that were really into video games were really, really into it, right? Yeah, like maybe 5% of the population, right? Like 50%. That meant that, of course, the few people that were really into it, again, were probably much more skilled, much more nerdy, and they care much more. One way you can look at it, right? Especially if my old man yelling at Klaus stands, is that we have this concept of the soul, right? You know, the, the burning soul, really believing in your game, really caring about it, caring about the project. Of course, having worked in the industry for over 15 years, of course, I've seen a massive shift, right? When I started in the industry, almost everyone was like, oh my God, I want to make the best game I want to make. I want to make this amazing, have these ideas. I want to. They, they lived and breathed games, right? The concept I really coming back to here is living and breathing games. Uh, I personally, have always lived and breathed games and martial arts. Right? So there have been two things in my life that I've had I live and breathe this thing. So for example, in my life as a martial artist, right, I would go to the dojo and I would train and so on, right? But I would also train every day at school. So literally, I was the ninja kid, right? I would go out in like reset the school when I'm like 14, and I would do push-ups and sit-ups, right? Like four, 14 year old at this playground. Because my sense told me that you need to do at least 200 push-ups every day if you want to get a black belt. You need to improve that, blah, blah, blah. So I went out and did 200 push-ups every like lunch break at school. So yeah, I was bullied for that too, you know. But at the same time, at this age, now I'm being bullied for being a martial artist. It was really worked as well for the bullies. But <laughs> you get my point. The soul is to really care about it all the time, right, in a way. And I think it's very important to understand that, for example, me then, most of being a game designer, right? When I work on a hero or design a stage or whatever, when I leave the office, I'm still working, right? In the sense that I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking, oh, maybe, maybe she should have, her crown should be in this color. Or maybe actually, her ability, maybe I'm still thinking about it. When I'm in the metro, when I'm in the car or whatever, right? I'm still thinking about my design, right? And this is a very common behavior for people that really care, of course, about their product, right? Uh, today, of course, Again, a little bit old men yelling at the clouds, but the young people today have a tendency, right, to just want to be a game developer because it's cool and sexy. They go there, they write their code or whatever, and then they go home, right? And in one way, don't get me wrong, that is more healthy, right? Because they don't actually care that much. It's more healthy. They can just do it, they leave, and they do something else, right? But people like me, that again are like forged in the blood and bone, breaking bones, but like in video games, we really care. So we keep working, right? And of course, that's also why the game industry traditionally is so incredibly much overtime because people really want to make good games, right? Now instead, it's kind of turned into this more like cooperative overtime because, again, then the behavior of the game developers used to be, right, that they want to work overtime because they really care about their games and they care about, you know, the gamer. They care about making their art, right? Today, instead, the corporation also used to be able to abuse that, right? So, of course, overtime is still incredibly <laughs> common, but it's more like, well, this is how the industry is, right? But that actually comes from the love, of course, of making games, right? Just like an author or a writer or, you know, this actor is really into the role, right? That's how people used to be. And, for example... I have written uh, the lore and the narrative for a few games I worked on, and when I done that, right, you know, I get really into it. I get home and I watch this thing. I watch a movie and I, oh, this inst that character. I could that's an interesting plotline. I could maybe have used something similar to that. And you know, I'm taking inspiration all the time, right? And for example, then as a person who hired people in my life, right, that have hired mostly game designers, uh, of course, for me, that's all I'm looking for right, in the young people. I'm looking for them to always be like, what to do in your free time. And if you watch a movie, what do you do? They're like, oh, in this movie, I think it's interesting because this plot line is interesting and I was thinking maybe it could be a game thing. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that I can see are always thinking about the next idea, right? The next the next, pro next mechanic, the next narration, right? Just like if you want to hire an inventor or an author or whatever, you want to really love and you know live for it, right? And like I said, in one way, it is healthier The people today don't do it, right? But also, it's an obvious matter of fact that they're going to make way worse games because they don't spend the time, they don't go and watch a movie and think, what can I use in this movie in my game, right? Maybe they do kind of automatically anyway, but most of them don't do that, right? So it's a combination of that that they also don't, don't, don't care that much, right? But it also, going back to this I mentioned earlier, the bell curve thing is all right, the apex of skills, that is very, very true. And I keep saying it, but it's objective fact that the skill level of per developer, percentage-wise, is way lower. And like I said earlier, I just want to iterate back before we go into formal language, but I point out again here, this is an objective fact. 
right? And I know this video is not tricks of people. No, people are good. No, they aren't, okay? People can say, oh, but indie developers are good. No, they aren't. Yes, there are a few very good indie developers. However, do you know how many incredibly bad indie developers there are? Uh, when I bring this topic up to people, right? Uh, they love to defend them by saying, but look at this indie company. These five guys are amazing, yeah. But I can, I can give you 500 guys that are not amazing. That are incredibly bad. So I want to that, yes. I think especially there are a few indie, like a tiny studios, right? That make really good games. But it's basically, because these are a few people that have found each other, right? Maybe at college. They made their own company and now they're making great games. These are the very, like, you know, non... <laughs> these are definitely, very, very likely, the very skilled people of the generation, right? So, yes, they exist. I'm not saying, as I mentioned, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, you know, good developers coming. Like I said it's, it's even a higher number uh, in total numbers, right, of good developers coming out. But you have the vast majority being incredibly unskilled, right? Uh, however, all that I said, I want to emphasize again, the biggest reason is the lack of nerd care level, right? Because that's an actual, like, factual distribution of humans. If you have it, everyone in the whole society wants to work with video games, not everyone, but point, like, a lot of people want to do video games, right, today, or other kind of nerd stuff, it's just a common thing to do today, right? That, of course, means that the skill level, right, or the care level, whatever you call it, is going to be way more random, so to speak, where if you go back then 20, 30, even 30 years, 40 years ago, right? 40 years ago, you're going to have like five people doing it, you know what I mean? Those people are going to be incredibly dedicated. It's a very, very obvious behavioral uh, analysis here. But anyway, now I'm talking about formal and informal language and how young people today, and this is a huge issue for me personally in the working industry, how young generation, they don't understand anything. So you might be wondering, what is formal and informal language? Formal language is basically the way for me to communicate to you in a simpler and a faster, efficient manner. Right? So for example, table. Table is formal language. I'm telling you that I'm going to go and buy a table. You know what a table is. You're like, oh, a table is like you know a wooden plank for this thing, whatever, right? But if I don't have the word for table or share and that, I have to explain to you, oh, like, this thing is made out of wood, it's like four things, and that that's informal language. And I have to explain to you how the mechanics of a table or a chair or a desk or whatever works. Right? But having these nouns, I can easily explain to you, I'm going to go buy a desk now, right? I'm going to go buy a fork now. But if you know what a fork is, again, I have to explain to you, right, in, in terms of, uh, it's made out of metal, it has like this thing, it's like four things, it's on a trident, it's another thing, and so on. The thing is then that the reason, and I mean it's a very, very serious issue that I see with young developers, is that because of their massive lower nerd level, right, and massive lack of caring about actually playing a bunch of games, and I really mean it, right, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I grew up, right, I played all the games, right, and I also played older games, you know, before I was born and so on, because I really cared, I want to know, right. It's kind of like if you make movies, you should watch Citizen Kane. You should watch Pulp Fiction. You should watch movies that have won Oscars, right? You should watch movies that are famous. You should watch simple Parasite, a great movie. Why are you winning an Oscar for? You should watch the latest Oscar, you know, everywhere. You should watch these movies, right? Because they're winning Oscars for some reason, right? Why people like them and so on. If you actually want to make movies, you should understand that. For example, I was a big fan of uh, Battle Royale games in the modern way, like Fortnite and so on. But I have played Fortnite a lot, okay? I have play, I play this game. Why? Because I'm a serious game developer, right? So I care. So I actually go and play the games I don't even personally like because I want to understand why these games are selling at large numbers, right? But if you don't have it driving you, you probably honestly shouldn't make video games, right? And then, then I mean it seriously. But anyway, how does it affect then formal and informal language? Here's an image of Kronos. Kronos, of course, and I mean of course, right? is the god of time. If you don't know that Kronos is time guy, you probably shouldn't be a game developer. And again, I mean that genuinely. Because how can you work in video game industry not ever heard about Kronos, the classic time guy from Greek mythology? Of course, Chrono Trigger. You have a lot of games with Chrono stuff. You have Chrono Warping, Chrono that, so on. Right? It's a very, very weird situation, but I've literally been there. I worked in a video game where one of the heroes I designed was then a working name, right, was called Kronos. Now I'm in front of 30 people, 
uh, explain he has the latest hero design, he can do this thing, blah, 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 and so on, right? And I'm seeing the word Kronos, and no one understands what I'm talking about. They're like, oh, who's Kronos? I'm like, you know, time guy, Kronos? And I'm just like, you know, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Warping, and they don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh, these are most of them people in their mid to young 20s, right? Kind of fresh out of college, you know, one or two years, no years ex- work experience. Some of them are interns so on, right? And I'm just like, wait, do I have to spend an hour now explaining to you guys what time magic are or time tech is in games? And they're like, yeah, what's that? And I'm just like, oh my god, this is an actual experience I have. I have to sit there, or stand rather than, and explain to them for like a while, this is Kronos, freaking Greek mythology guy. Uh, again, this is an actual experience I have, and that to me shouldn't shock me, but that was kind of the beginning of it, right? And I think that it's fair to say that some gods, right, some mythology, you, maybe you wouldn't know too easily, but a guy like Kronos, and with all the games and so on, but what I'm talking about here is, again, formal language, right? Because if I say Kronos, I expect you, as a game designer, to understand that if I tell you, I want you to make me like a Kronos hero, right, you know, with Kronos abilities, I don't want to be able to tell you more than that. You should understand immediately that I'm referring to different time mechanics. Now, if I'm the, if I'm your boss, I'm the lead designer, right? Because I'm probably going to give you more <laughs> than that. But my point is that you should immediately understand that I'm referring to time magic, right? And then be starting to design your hero with time mechanics. For example, maybe you know moving back in time, like Tracer and Overwatch. Maybe you know tell it. Maybe a- the aging people. Maybe aging people. You know, maybe tell sort of that. You should understand what game mechanics are coming from a time guide. Right? And this again, why formal language is very important. Because I can tell you then exactly. I want basically this thing, right? But I don't want to micromanage you. But I want this thing, and you should understand what I'm talking about. Uh, however then, because of the young people, and I, of course I'm obviously generalizing here, but I've seen this in a very, very large uh, numbers, and very, very common issue, is that they don't know anything. They don't play this all game. They don't read. Think about what I mentioned earlier. I used to read all the mythology. Right? I used to read everything about Norse mythology. Everything about Greek mythology. Everything about the Japanese mythology. I know my York guys, right? I know my Odin and Thor and Loki and so on. I know all this stuff, right? And etc. I know my Marvel and comic books. <laughs> and I also know my Batman, right? I know my manga, I know my anime. So do you get my point? If someone tells me, oh, I want to make like uh, this guy. Okay, I, I get it, you know. I want to make this ability. I get it, right? And it actually is very useful in game development if you can tell someone, not only because it makes it much easier, right, to communicate, but also... Because we have the same vision, right? So what I'm referring to here is like a sub-issue of the lack then of formal language. I've seen a lot in, when I worked in the industry, is that people, and this is like typical issue though, generally speaking, not only because they're young or whatever, also bad management, right? But people need to have the same vision when you're making a game. But it is a large part because the younger development guys don't really, you know, aren't really nerds. It's a huge part of it. So, for example, Loki then, obviously for Marvel, he's like famous now then, right, in the culture. So, if I tell you guys, oh, I want to have a hero, it's kind of like Loki. That actually will probably work, right, because people have watched his movies, and so they know, oh yeah, this is the trickster guy, right. So, what does that entitle to, right? If I tell you, make me a hero, uh, that's Loki. Well, the mechanics, illusions, cloning, teleportation, right? See, I hope people understand what I'm talking about in the video here. I really hope to talk about it, but basically my point is that, if I'm telling you, right, to make a Loki hero, you should understand, without me saying anything else, that the mechanics are probably, right, illusions, right? They're probably stuff like trickster magic, right? Of course, I could have used the term trickster, but that's also, again, a formal language part. Now I have to explain to you what a trickster is. What does trickster mechanic means, right, in a game, you know, setting, right? If I explain to you I want a trickster like Loki, that's more formal, and more people get it, right? So there you can see that if I go into a company and today and tell them, okay, next hero should be like Loki, people will actually get it, right? But if I go in and tell them, I want next hero to be like Kronos, again, I have actually experienced people not getting that like, at all. And I can give you a hundred of examples where I'm just like, have you ever played this game? Because I also told people once in <laughs> a couple of years ago, I thought people, now I want this guy to be like Sonic, obviously for Sonic the Hedgehog, it should be fast and this, and they're like, what is Sonic? And like, you guys haven't played Sonic. Like that's a serious experience I had. So I asked the guys then, a couple of you know younger people, right? I was like, wait, you don't know Sonic? They're like, no. So what do you? Or you? What do you play? I play League, some Wolf. 
a lot. And then I asked them straight up, would you refer to them as gamers? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we game. I play a game. And I was like, what games do you actually play? We play League. And I was like, okay, but how, what other games do you play? And we only play League, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going to say, guys, I don't think you're a gamer, honestly, if you only play one game. The problem is you're a leaguer, right? If you only play Woof, you're a World of Warcraft player, yeah. It's kind of like, nah, to be a gamer, you kind of need to play at least a few genres, <laughs> something like that. But you can see my problem, right? Of course, I'm not only saying that it's a problem because people are very into a few games. But it's also it's a side issue, right? A lot of people coming out in this today, they only played one or few games. Yeah, they don't really go into playing all the majority of games, different genres, etc. They play like one game, right? They play only play Dota or whatever. That absolutely doesn't help, right? <laughs> but uh, it is a bigger issue because, again, Sonic for me is like Citizen Kane or whatever, right? It's like, of course, you have to play Sonic games. I don't say you have to play them every day, but I think it's very weird, honestly. If you want to be a game developer, you haven't played, you know, Morik and Sonic, and if you haven't played these very, very iconic games, uh, Banu Kazooie, whatever, yeah, of course you have to play these games. I'm not saying you have to play them 10 hours a day, but for me, just like if you want to make a movie, it's very strange if you haven't seen some of the most famous movies, uh, or, you know, best movies, or one in these things, or one, right? If you want to be a game developer, you really should have played Final Fantasy, etc. You know, I guess it's a big and long list. But you get my point. You should have played this game, Mega Man, whatever, right? Caps, Castlevania, and so on. You should have played these games. You should have played Diablo. You should have played Baldur's Gate, etc. You get my point. Uh, it is weird to me that I have to sit there many, many times in my life these days, the last maybe 10 or so years, and being like, okay, this is going to be similar to Sonic. And people are like, what's Sonic? I'm like, okay. Uh, and then next week, I'm like, okay, this is going to be similar to. Um, I don't know, Baldur's Gate, and they're like, what's Baldur's Gate? I'm like, it's a role-playing game. <laughs> you know? I have sat there so many times in my life, I feel the late, so 10 years almost, and it's been like, oh my god, right? And it comes back to what I mentioned earlier, that back in the days, right, if you were into games, you were super nerd elite, right? But it really helps for, again then, formal language, but also, as you know, the vision, right? Because I have so many times, <laughs> I've worked on games where I feel like, I feel a few of you understand what I'm talking about here, right? So you're probably going to wait for it. For example, uh, I was working on this video game, and I wanted to make this like harpy, mecha, cyborg, waifu, bird, whatever, you know, like a sexy, uh, mechanical, angel lady. But imagine basically, you know, some harpy or angel, bird team, right? But she's like a cyborg, okay. The VFX artist, he gets what I'm talking about, right? I have a document, I have like a 50-page document, but whatever, so obviously they don't read it, but anyway. The VFX guy, he gets it, right? So he goes and makes, like, lightning abilities. Because she has lightning. Uh, you know, a harpy, mechanical harpy, right? So he can send lightning and so on. So he goes and makes a, a bird lightning. So you send a lightning ball that transforms into, like, a lightning bird. It looks really cool. So I'm like, yes, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is cool, man. We got a harpy lady. She's like a cyborg, sexy harpy lady. Big opas for that, right? And she's sending lightning, bro. Oh, I like this. Yes, this works. Okay, I'm like, good. Check on that, right? Because I'm the creative director. Cost me, yes. Check, check on that. Okay, great. Uh, I personally wrote all the codes, whatever. So I'm doing the codes. So that's fine. Uh, and then... Here comes the artist, right? He's like, oh, I made the, the bird lady. I'm like, okay, great. Let, let me just look at the bird lady, the first sketch. It's an empty bird! He just shows me a goddamn bird, man! I'm just like, that's a bird. He's like, yeah, you want the bird. No, I want, like, an attractive, you know, like, feminine lady with bird features. Maybe she could be, like, an angel. Maybe, but prefer, like, a harpy. You know, maybe, like, a f wing hands, or maybe, you know, wings on her back or something. She could have like a face, like a bird thing, but you know, with, with the breasts, right? Where's the where's the ass or something? But nobody says, I'm like, well, what? It's just a bird. And he's just like, yeah, but you want a bird. Did you read the documents? It's like, yeah, I'll skim through them. Yeah, I want, we don't want a bird actually. Now we got a bird spitting birds. It looks stupid, okay? Go back and redo it. Like, that's a lack of vision, right? It's a lack of understanding the same vision. Because when I told him I want a harpy, mechanical harpy, He's like, what's a harpy? I'm like, Jesus Christ. A harpy is a famous mythological monster for Greek mythology. And he's like, okay, I never heard of harpy. Have you never played any game with harpies? World of Warcraft? Here's the mathematic, whatever. He's like, no. I was like, okay. A harpy is a bird lady, right? He's like, okay, a bird. I'm like, a harpy is half bird, half man. He's like, he said, no, I, meant, I meant like human, you know. Like, that's actually how our conversation went, right? Uh, and yeah, again. I had given him 50-page document, right? 
and explain to him in great detail in the meeting, you know, what a harp is, gives me a bird, right? So you can blame me, whatever, I was a bad, <laughs> bad leader, but honestly, no, I think it is that he doesn't understand the language, right? Because I keep telling him, he's a bird lady, right? She's half bird, half woman, okay? Like a mermaid, basically. It's like, what is a mermaid, basically? That's the level of lack of understanding, right? Of the nerd level, right? Or mythologies or something. And I really mean, this is an actual case. It happened to me more than once. I, on the same game, I told them to make me a kentaur. I did not get a kentaur, okay? <laughs> like, I, I told them to make me a kentaur. That day, I got like a pyramid, okay? That, that was the most one of the worst. And we had another... Another faction, okay, so the Kentaur and Harpy, they, are, they were like cyborgs, so there was one faction in the game. Another faction in the game was more like uh, mythology based, that's where Cronus was, very like, you know, god based, right? And one of them was like Lucifer, you know, so his power, his, his name is Legion, and he had a bunch of different, like, you know, satanic, you know, you can put a yeah, demonic uh, team, right? Because again, his faction was like god faction, right? So they had like Cronus, Janus, Legion, what more did they have? Okami, they had like different gods, different mythologies, that's kind of their team. And I was, oh, we have a legion guy, right? He's a demon, blah, blah, blah. Do you think I got a demon? No, I got something else. <laughs> I did not get a demon. I was like, how don't you know what this is, right? And to be fair, this company was terrible. And they had an issue where me as the creative director, if I told them that I want this thing, right? And then they could do what they want. Of course, they had other issues too, generally in the development. But a large issue was that miss issue, right, of formal language, right? If I tell someone that I want like, uh, you know, Diablo and demons with horns and red skin and black and this thing And there's like, okay, what's Lucifer? What's Diablo? I'm like, oh my god, like this is actually something happened to me right? I have to explain to them for hours and I have to set them images that like, here's Diablo, like Diablo, you know, the game Here's this thing, here's this movie, watch this thing, right? And the thing is that if you go back 15 years ago, right? If I told someone I want like Diablo, Diablo 2, oh Diablo 2, I play Diablo 2, yeah, Diablo 2, good, okay. I want like this movie, I want like Pulp Fiction, and they would be like, oh yeah, I love that movie. But they would actually understand what I'm referring to, right? For example, in this game, or all the other we had like, you know, like the dances, right? And play of the game and so on. And I had to explain to the artist guys, like, I want them to do this dance. So, do the Pulp Fiction dance. So seriously, okay, I have been there. I have been there, literally, standing in front of like 30 people, explaining that, okay, but when this woman wins, right, she's gonna do the Pulp Fiction dance, because she's kind of like a Kill Bill with the Pulp Fiction inspired character, right? So obviously, Yuma Thurman is inspired by, so I want her, like, victory dance, right, to be the distance. And I can look at the, the 30 people look at me, and they're like, what's Pulp Fiction? Who's Yuma Thurman? I'm just like, Jesus Christ. And again, I'm not saying they didn't know everything, right? And then I had to do the Vogue. I was like, do the Vogue thing, the Madonna. They're like, who's Madonna? And I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I have genuinely spent this many, many times, right? And the thing is that if I go back, right, again, and look at like 50 years ago, or whatever it is to speak, I wouldn't have to explain to you that, oh, this is the famous dancer, right? This is this person, right? Because, again, when I got into the game industry, right, and when I started doing games and so on, you know, it was so few people doing it that everyone was like super hardcore nerd. So you knew all these memes, you knew the dance, you knew the culture, right? you knew the pop culture. Of course, today gaming, for example, Fortnite, right, has a lot of, you know, dance moves. We have the Carlton from, for example, Fast and so on, right? And that is something I expect you, right, as a game developer, to somewhat know. I think it's fair to say that I don't think every, like, 30, 20 year olds, maybe they shouldn't all know the Vogue, right? But I think a few of them should know the Vogue. Uh, but it would get worse that they don't even know video games, right? They don't even know famous games like Sonic or so on. And this, this, all I told this video is all true. And this is a massive issue where I had then, you know, asked this like very, very like overworking, um, in this game for example, I'm referring to here, I was also like the lead technical guy, right? I was the like lead designer, creative director, but also I was the most like doing all the script and all the visual thing. And so I was very, very like, I can't just sit here or stand here or whatever and explain to you what the Pulp Fiction dance is, right? I have to go and do like this coding thing. I have to go and like develop this hero because I'm also implementing the heroes, right? I'm also the, the, like the most important like, you know, tech guy on the same time, which of course shows like a, it's a pretty bad company that I have to do both, but to get my point, I'm just like, I don't have time here to stand and explain to you guys a very famous, here's a Google link, right? So, so look, look at the YouTube, whatever, yeah. You should, should know that, right? And, uh, but basically, it is truly a big issue, right? 
So anyway, hope you guys the video, right? subscribe, slap and so on. I'm gonna make more in this part, right? But I want to emphasize here again that there are quite many other factors why games today are more soulless, right? And why they are bad and so on. But I think honestly, this is arguably the biggest factor. The factor that almost everyone, not everyone of course, but almost everyone coming out today are way less caring, right? Way m less skill-based and way less interested in the general culture of you know games, right? And like I mentioned earlier, this is a fact, right? People get really idiots on this memory. It is a fact because, as I said, right, distribution, right, of normal human behavior, of course, means that if you have, and I'm broken record, but I really emphasize this is factual because if you have that only a very few people in a very niche thing do something, those people are probably really care about it, right? But if this niche thing becomes very popular, this is why I course called a video talking about like you know the gaming is popular is actually ruining the quality of games because gaming becoming popular introduces way more people right or that skilled right and it isn't only about again like nerd level but it's a good way to look at it right like they they lack nerd level but they also generally are like worse coders I mentioned they're worse at art they're just worse because they don't really have the investment right they don't have that like gritting blood and bone. All that being said about Palazzo, of course it's good that bullying and so on is less important, right? It is good that people get low status, right, playing video games. It's good in that sense. But it also creates, of course, this huge issue. Uh, there are, of course, many other factors that go into in other videos. For example, one massive big issue, which I talked about in the video then, uh, I spoiler here, is that some of these big corporations, though, right? They just want to push out the same game over and over again. And they actually, this is a big issue, right? they actually rather hire these people. They don't actually care about them that much, right? Rather than the skilled, hardcore guys coming out. This actually is the truth. They're basically, unskilled, no nerd, doesn't actually care that much. They actually have an easier time getting hired at a lot of AAA studios. Because AAA studios, right, just want to produce mostly they, the same kind of games, right? Which is, of course, another factor. But there's just like an unholy alliance there of corporations that want to produce the exact same shit over and over again preferably hiring people that aren't, don't actually care that much right they don't play the games they don't know the, the actual culture and they don't they don't have any creatives in them right they actually rather hire these uncreative people because it's easier to manage them and manipulate them to just do the exact same thing over and over again this is this is very very bad so that might be the next video's topic but uh and please subscribe and have a great day